to have you here. Well, welcome everyone to this very special evening on Heart to Heart Connections. I'm your co I'm your co-host. Yes, I am your co-host, Robin Blanc Muscari, and it is my privilege, pleasure, and joy to bring on our special guest this evening. She's someone I've known for many decades who's had a dramatic influence on my life. We met in the corporate world. She comes from a background, a very successful corporate background in training and sales, um, in facilitation. She was my teacher, my mentor, my friend, and has made a huge, huge contribution to my life, and I believe many of yours. And we met and bonded instantly. And when something's going on in my life, she is the first call I make to see either a bigger picture, or see what's in the way. Um, Genevieve Joshua, otherwise known as JJ, uh, is a master at, at really seeing where the blocks are. So often in our culture, we get, we want to move forward and we put more foot in, you know, we put more on the gas and what she helps do is take the foot off the brake so we can move forward with ease and grace. And she has been a gift in my life and our community for a long, long, long time. And I'm thrilled to bring on my friend, my mentor, um, my teacher, and my very special gift in my life. Yo, woman! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, woman! We've been telling that to each other for years, and neither one of us can remember why or how we started that. But yo, woman back, and, and thank you for being a part of the LifeWave community again, just watching the all those testimonials just opened my heart. We're talking about open heartedness tonight. It was just thrilling. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you for everybody that got me here. I'm so grateful. Yes, well, we're thrilled to have you. And this topic tonight on Heart to Heart Connection is such a perfect topic always, but especially at this unique time of the year. But this is, this is timeless. And the material this evening um, we're going to, I'm going to share more about it later. So I'm just going to turn things over to you, JJ, and let you run with it. And I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Gregory. I guess we're ready for that PowerPoint slide. Gregory is going to be my, my master of slides today. Thank you, Gregory, for that. Um, and before I go any further, um, I just want to say happy Thanksgiving to everyone and how grateful, how much we have to be grateful for everyone who's here, particularly our friends, Robin and, Greg, and Robin and Gregory, and how much, what incredible leaders they are, and hope and hearted all the way, and, and thank you again, and happy Thanksgiving. So today, we're gonna cover the three pillars of heart to heart connecting. And what I want to just say is that this PowerPoint, has been designed specifically and intentionally to also serve as a handout. So every, I want you to just allow yourself to relax and receive this because you will be getting this uh, on the Facebook page here either later today or soon, um, including the recording. And so everything's in here that you will really need to prompt your memory. And there's two flashcards here to help you with connecting. So it's all in there. Relax. Let's go to the next slide, Gregory. Okay, just a moment. Here we go. So here we are. We're going to learn a profound and but simple practice to increase your skills, and confidence, and you're inspired, inspired by, you know, where inspiration comes from while connecting to yourself and others. We're going to take about 30 minutes to describe all this. But I want you to know in the beginning that this whole practice is literally can be doable in two to five minutes. So everything you're going to learn is applicable on the fly with your intention. It's an inner experience of literally how to talk to yourself to boost heart-to-heart uh, -heart connecting with yourself and others. So it's a little bit of explanation, but it's in application. I've always designed all of my tools for my coaching team that way that can they do this in 10 minutes or less? So onward, Gregory, to the next. Thank you. We're going to discuss the connecting, the three pillars are connecting to your why. Be intentional. And I know that Gregory and Robin are always talking to you about the power of intention. 
So here we are. And Gregory, I just realized uh, I can't see myself. Can the others people see my face? Yes, you're uh, you're up on the side of the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> I just want to make sure everybody can see, see me. Yep. So connecting to your why, Robin and Gregory have been teaching you about that from the beginning, connecting to your whole self and then connecting to others. So on to the next, please. Okay, we want to make a nod uh, to John Maxwell for that wonderful work he did at the convention. And what I, what's perfectly obvious here, isn't it? Uh, of his five essentials, there's only one, only one of them that directly builds your team. It's the connecting. The connection draws straight line, a straight line of influence from action to measurable and meaningful team growth results. So I know Robin and Gregory give you lots of personal growth. That's, that's just built in to your, to your community, a lot of it mindset help. The other one that's indirectly builds your team is learning leadership skills. And then of course, significance is actually in the product. It's in everything you're doing, but it's the connection piece that's going to ramp up your business in 2024, really getting more skilled at that connecting. And let's move on to the next. Thank you. Before you reach out in any way, first things first, including texting, before you start your 333 daily plan, before you do your daily method of operation, do to connect with people heart to heart and pique their interest. Set and activate your personal inspired intention, not your goals. Your goals don't inspire the greater field of energy, what, or one what of my uh, friends calls the cute little universe, the quantum field, it is your intention that actually activates that energy. Next, please. So I am not a business owner of LifeWave. I'm a patch user. And of course, I'm in Gregory and Robin's team to support them in any way I can. But I leaned into, well, what if I was a brand partner? What would be my intention? This is pillar number one, setting and electrifying your intentions. And this is the one I wrote for myself, and you're free to use any of the words you want, but the, the thing is that makes an intention powerful is that it's got to be short. This one's a little long, actually. <laughs> Sparkly, meaning the language fires you up. The language opens your heart. Just the language opens your heart. And crystal clear. Write them down and have them all over your work area. It doesn't do a darn bit of good to write a beautiful intention and have it in a three ring binder. Have it out. You know, what's in front of you, you're going to remember. Get your body into it. When you're doing your intentions, uh, the three minute, two minute um, Amy Cuddy power pose we've talked about in other webinars, legs of stance, patting yourself on the cheeks. Hugging yourself, get your body into your intention as well as your words and your emotions. And mine, uh, I really want to go to this, do this business since I choose and intend for my LifeWave business to be a beacon of light and a grounded instrument of well being, health, happiness, and abundance in all and every way. My LifeWave business creates a ripple effect of loving community, strength, integrity, and kindness and abundance. Electrify your intentions. Next, please. So connecting powerfully to your whole self is pillar number two. Your connections with others simply cannot be any better than your connection to yourself. It's impossible. Your open-heartedness with yourself is what begins the open-heartedness with others. Next, please. So guess what, you guys? We all have three selves. Remember from children's literature, me, myself, and I? Well, the me is what I call the basic self. The myself is the conscious self. And the higher self is the I. I came across this spiritual teaching through my many, many spiritual teachers in 1987. And I have used it in everything I write, in every contact, in the three different industries I've worked in with my salespeople, my uh, facilitators, as, uh, as Robin knows. I've used it in everything, and especially self-management. It's a mystical tool 
and it's also profoundly practical. So let's move on and talk more about the three selves. The first one is the conscious self. That's the one that's watching the seminar right now that got you here on time, <laughs> that keeps your technology going. The conscious self is the thinking and reasoning brain. It's focused on the future and the past most of the time. It is the seat of your worldly awareness, scanning for better ways to survive and better ways to experience pleasure. It does not, it does not have a direct communication with your higher self or source. The conscious self is kind of in its own little thing, which you might have noticed. <laughs> Next, please, Gregory. The higher self is also known as the soul, the exalted self, the transcendent self. It is the seat of your soul, of truth, of love, with a capital L. Compassion and the ability to forgive and the ability to heal comes from your higher self. We've all got one. We don't have to earn it or learn it. You do have to remember it, though, and turn to it. And it exists in the present tense, the now. It attempts to guide you to the higher plan for your life, path, and purpose. And it has, obviously, a direct connection to your divine source. Your higher self knows who and where your people are to build your business. I want to tell you a quick story, a very personal story of something that happened to me three years ago. It was winter time. I was wearing a big, thick winter coat, puppy coat, and I'm off to go to, to the co-op. I needed some broccolini. So I'm at, at the produce department in the co-op, and there's another woman right there in her big puffy winter coat looking for broccolini. So I was waiting for her, and then she started singing, or toning, really, humming, this beautiful sound that went right into my heart. And my eyes started tearing up, and I am not a crier. And I couldn't help myself. I turned to her, and I said, that is one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. Is that a song? And she said, no, no, I hum to myself when I'm frightened. And of course, the life coach in me <laughs> said, well, honey, why are you frightened? And she said, I am recovering from a severe, almost drowning trauma. And this is the first day in three years I've been out on my own. And I'm very nervous. And I started actually crying. And so her traumatized self, my traumatized self, I had many traumas before I was 23 years old, one after another. We came together in a field of loving and miraculous combining. And I just hugged her as tight as I could, full body hug, puffy, puffy coat to puffy coat. And I noticed that the other people in the produce department were kind of guarding us. They knew we were, we were having a moment and we were just time stilled and we cried out loud, ugly cried together, each with our faces in each other's puffy coat, crying out the trauma to, so that we could each be less frightened. And after a few minutes, we separated and we looked at each other, we shared a few words, but we both knew that we had come to get, and I left without my broccolini. <laughs> I was so blown away by the experience that we had both come to the same place at the same time to receive a healing that only she and I could deliver together. We met, our souls could heal each other. Okay, so now how did that happen? Well, my higher self and her higher self were both thinking about broccolini at the co-op and got us both there at exactly the same time. A miraculous experience, one of the most powerful healings of my life. Your higher self, knows where your people are. If you stay strong in your intention and you stay strong in your kindness to yourself, those actions will happen more frequently. Next, please, Gregory. Now, we have the conscious self and the higher self, and we also have the basic self. This is the me of the me, myself, and I. And it's also known as an inner child. It's in charge of your body awareness and consciousness and your emotions. It lives primarily in the past, but not entirely in the subconscious mind. And it has a direct line. Your higher self has a direct line of communication to your higher self. And that little light bulb down there is to remind me to tell you that 
That's how gut feelings happen. Your higher self gives you a nudge, go to the broccoli store, <laughs> and your basic self feels it in the gut area. The energetic address of your basic self is literally right around the umbilical cord, around your belly button and lower belly. That's its energetic home, but it has a direct line of communication to your higher self, and that's where intuition and gut feelings come from. Gut feelings that will help with your safety and gut feeling like, I think I should call so-and-so today, and they just happen to be home. So working with your basic self and your high self connection can directly impact your business. Next slide, please. Your basic self only cares about three things. Am I good? Do you think I'm good? Am I loved? Am I safe? Yes, sweetie, you are. You are good, you are loved, and you are safe. That's how you talk to your basic self with strength and compassion. Next one, please. So here we go. When the basic self does not feel safe, respected, loved, or included, or informed about what's going on, you are not going anywhere with your conscious self goals. Nowhere, period. So the, the brown horse is the conscious self. The basic self is the white horse. And in the carriage is the high self just riding along going, when you guys are through du duking it out, I'll help you out. Everything, especially you guys, this is really important for all of us introverts. Yes, I'm an introvert. When you're about ready to do a heart-to-heart -heart connecting, whether it's texting or in person, or you're going to pick up the phone and call someone, before you reach out to pique someone's interest, please reach in and talk to your basic self and say, hey, we're going to have fun with this call. I'm with you. There's nothing to be worried about. All it is is a phone call. We have a chance to make a new friend. That's all it takes, just a moment of connecting. You can even put your hand on your belly and say, we're going to make a call right now. Let's do it together. I'm with you. I got your back. Your higher self has your back, and you, your conscious self, needs to have your basic self's back as well, consciously. Next slide, please. So Robin's going to share with us in just a minute of her experience, but I want to share all these cool benefits. It boosts your energy on every level when you got all three selves working together. It increases your sense of worthiness, which is so important. Grows your confidence, opens your heartful inspiration. It comes from the higher self. It reduces anxiety for sure. When that basic self knows it's safe today and it's got, and it has what it needs. It's got its food and it's gonna be rested and it knows when it's gonna get some playtime. It's good, it's happy. And it grows your joy and joy is catching. And it builds that bridge to higher love, wisdom and inner peace. Okay, Robin, tell us what you'd like to share about the your experience with the basic self. And can we see you again? I'm here, I'm here. So. JJ asked me to share how this work affected my life. And I said, it dramatically changed my life. I was introduced to this decades ago and it has given me perspective in so many arenas of life, everything from how to set up a seminar room <laughs> to how to build relationships to even how to buy gifts. And when we're going, you know, that slide that JJ shared a few minutes ago about the, the, the tug of war going on, if the basic self is not on board, forget it, you're not going anywhere. And, and, and JJ continues to remind me when any of us are going through any kind of change, that basic self needs to feel safe. When we're growing in a place we've never been, we have to feel safe. And I'm going to share something that a lot of you don't know about me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I ran upstairs to get it because it's my basic self, Buddy. His name oh. is actually Buddy. And, and Buddy has been with me since I was 16. And I'm going to show you Buddy. This is Buddy. And he's kind of flat because he's been hugged a lot. But I, if you don't, I know this sounds silly for some of you, but it's not. It's actually one of the most practical things you can possibly do for yourself is have something to hold on to when you're going through something that's big and that's a change. We need to feel safe to go into a new place. And so whether I'm putting on a seminar 
or we're doing a Zoom or whatever, we need to create an environment for people to feel safe to move to what's next. And, you know, when I'm doing a public event, you know, who shows up when you're going to a public event, you may not realize this, you know, you think it's the conscious self that's going to this event that's going to learn something. But the first one that shows up is the basic self. Do I know where I'm going? So places, when you show up at an event and there's not good signage or you don't know where you're headed, you get all dis, you know, discombobulated. But if there's really good signage and you show up and you get in the room and you feel safe there because the presenter has credibility and you know where the bathrooms are, you know, these are some basic, basic things. And then they give you your notebook or your materials or whatever that may be, your name tag that makes you feel connected. That's a basic self thing. And it's a big deal. Just a welcome sign. I was always the greeter, no matter where I went it, throughout my whole life because I love greeting people. And that is a huge piece. I didn't understand it until I did this work. And then when you're in the seminar, you know, you get your materials, it's your conscious self getting fed, but then you're getting connected. And so it's, it's, and JJ and I've had quite a fun time over the years, sending cards and gifts. And, you know, I went to one of those, I don't remember what they're called when you go to a party and you exchange, you know, you, you, you vouch for these different gifts and everything. Well, my gifts were like the most sought after gifts of anyone's, you know, <laughs> and you grab someone else's gift. And I, and one, and the gift was a conscious self, a basic self and a high self gift. And whether we're conscious or not, there's a craving. And when you're developing relationships, this was a huge thing that JJ taught me. When you meet someone, you typically connect on one of the three selves. You know, JJ in the grocery store connected on a, a, on a basic and a high self with that person. It was a really deep bonding. And the strongest relationships in our lives are relationships that have all three selves. You typically might connect on the one of them. You might share vision with someone and connect on the high self and they get to know each other and work together. And, you know, when you look at really healthy, wonderful, lasting relationships, what you'll notice is there's all three selves connecting. So it's incredibly practical. And I just invite each and every one of you, you know, because you know me, I love personal development. It's my passion. It's my absolute love about our profession is having a safe place. And Gregory and I call it a greenhouse. It's a safe place to grow. And so we want to continue to do that. And so I invite you to really look at your life and look, what do you need to feel safe to go to that next place and get yourself a teddy bear if you don't have one? We used to do this train the trainer program and we had corporate people come to get certified in this leadership program. And JJ gave everyone a little teddy bear with their name on it uh, to take <laughs> with them or to have. And I would actually bring it with me. I was traveling every single week and I brought my little baby teddy bear with me. And sometimes I introduced them, sometimes I didn't. For some people, it seems silly, but I know that it's not. It's really something important. So I'm hugging Buddy, and he goes out on loans sometimes if someone's going through a hard time. Um, but just know it's something that can make a huge difference in your life, and it's absolutely transformed mine. So thank you, JJ. <laughs> thank you, Robin. That was a beautiful sharing. Uh, yes, Robin and I met each other in uh, Train the Trainer program uh, years ago, and the three cells were very much uh, a part of that time. So we can go on to the next slide now, please, Gregory. Thank you. All right, you guys. This is like the golden key for your basic self. This can change your life. And that is praising the basic self. And I want to show you what a praise calendar looks like. You can see my calendar here in September of this year, I decided to reintroduce four fitness habits. And I knew I was going to need a lot of basic self-help on that. 
and a lot of discipline. And so I got all kinds of stickers. Each sticker had a different meaning. And look what happened. I failed through that month because I was praising. So those of you, again, introverted, those of you that are uh, have a little challenge with the connecting, you know, making a phone call or sending a text, absolutely, before you even get started, just put your hands on your lower, lower belly and say, hey, we're going to do it. I'm right there with you. We can do this. And praise your basic self. Sometimes you might have a name for your basic self and say, Thank you for showing up today. Thank you for the courage to pick up this phone and call this person. I really appreciate you being on board with me. Let's do it. That is to supercharge any change you desire. As I mentioned, a fitness desire, a diet desire, growing your business. You want to get, as Robin told us very clear, you want that basic self on board. And guess what? If you're training a puppy, if you're training a young child, how do you encourage them? You encourage them with praise. You can do it. You can do this. We can do this. We all have been doing this unconsciously. Now we're going to do it consciously for ourselves and our basic self. This is amazing. I healed my relationship with technology. I was a technophobe. I was a techno hater. I was really a tech hater. And I have a lot more in technical stuff to do in my business than you'd think I would. And I have a dyslexic brain and technology can be very challenging for me sometimes. And I was just losing so much power to this relationship that was not kind. <laughs> I started praising myself. Every time I did something really cool, I would, I, and I actually had a list. I started writing down a list of things I, I would figure out without having to call somebody. I would get up and do a happy dance and praise my basic self up one side and down the other in just a few weeks. All of my anxiety, I'm no longer afraid of technology. When it misbehaves, I just, well, whoops, you know, that's the universe. I don't take it personally. I'm not a phobe anymore, a technophobe, and I'm not a techno hater. Thanks to praising my basic self. Next, please. <laughs> okay. We're going to talk about, here is your first flashcard. This is getting in touch with your three inner selves. So we have an acronym here, become, become in harmony and in kindness and in heartfulness with your basic self. So if we would all do this right now, let's put a smile on our faces and breathe three breaths. I have just finished this week a seven-week program, online program with Eckhart Tolle on the doorways to presence. If you ever get a chance to take that course, talk about a high self boost. It, it was absolutely elegant, sublime, and so very helpful and so very practical. And I just was reminded again, Eckhart's been teaching us for 30 years, the power of now. So let us remember to breathe and smile to connect to ourselves. It's kind of like the key. It's the password that opens up to your higher self and your basic self. Your conscious self is pretty much always there <laughs> running its stories. So it's connecting consciously to your high self and your basic self. Breathe in and affirm that you are worthy of all blessings. Encourage your basic self with love, respect, praise, be kindly, and a teddy bear. Consciously connect with the now to better access your higher self. Just takes three breaths, that's all it takes. Open your heart with gratitude for the blessings right in front of you. Um, I'm very clairvoyant and clairaudient and uh, clairsentient. And when I'm working with my clients, I can actually see the energy when they start to be grateful for something that at one point was a real pain for them, that it literally builds a bridge to their higher self and builds strength. The attitude of gratitude is so profound. Magnify your intentions and goals for this day with your breath and your loving focus. Uh, that's for the higher self and the conscious self to work together. And then elevate your whole self with kind self-talk all day long. Next, please, Gregory. Okay, guys, this may be the most important slide in the whole show tonight. Guilt-free zone. Most of my coaching sessions are to help people 
heal from unconscious and conscious guilting, shaming, and criticizing. I was given a clairvoyant vision once of my own basic self, having grown up in a very critical home that it had thousands of little papers, razor cuts, like the teenagers that cut themselves. My basic self is covered with cuts from all the criticism. It was an image that stuck me in my tracks and helped me start to heal my basic self of all that criticism. Underneath almost all of our disturbances, financial health, whatever, is a perception of guilt or shame. And we just got to learn to stop doing that to ourselves. Stop it, drop it. Shift your attention to how wonderful you are. These thoughts and habits undermine your health, your wealth, your happiness, everything. Simply ask yourself, set a life intention to stop guilting, to stop shaming. Just, just zero tolerance. I'm not going to do that to myself anymore. Your life will change. Practice mindful kindness and self-forgiveness when you slip up. And you know how John Maxwell says every day, every day? Well, I say every time, every time you slip, every time, stop, breathe, smile, apologize to your basic self and reset your intention of how worthy you are. This is a lifestyle. I call it the forgiveness lifestyle, the lifestyle of kindness. It is absolutely essential for a life of abundance and joy. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're in pillar number three, connecting heart to heart with others, with your team. Now that you've connected with yourself and you're becoming masterful at it already, we know we gotta go connect with peeps and grow our team. Right there, look at that. The biggest communication problem is we don't listen to understand. We listen to reply. We listen to reply. We listen to be thought of as special. We listen to make a point. We listen to be right. But if you set, and I didn't have a slide for this, so please write this down, this note down if you can. If you set this intention and repeat it every day, I choose and intend to listen to understand, to listen and hear with every communication, with, with your LifeWay business and all of your people. Before you call, text, Zoom, or connect in person, stop and breathe. Send that person a beam of kindness and well wishes for them. I just, I just hold them in my heart. I think of their name and I say, I send you light. I send you joy. Thank you for you. That's how simple it can be. Pillar number three. On to the next, please, Gregory. Heart-to-heart -heart connection, breakthrough in Chicago. Okay, I got a fun story to tell you guys. In 1989, I was a sales manager for Vertical Software Systems based in Denver. It was a computer-aided transcription company, software and hardware for court reporters, uh, courthouses, of course, big law firms, hospitals. And I had a team of 11 sales reps. They were all guys all across the country. And we were in an extremely competitive business. There were only four vendors and all of our customers, 85% women, were literally in the phone book. We, the prospecting was no problem in this industry. We could find them anywhere. They were advertised in the phone book. And so you can imagine how competitive it was. So every Monday morning, this was... 1989, Oprah had only been out for three years. Email was not predominantly used. Uh, the only way to connect with people was basically phone or mail. We actually used to send letters to, to the courthouses to get uh, approval to come. And then cold calling, good old fashioned cold calling. We did that in person. So uh, every Monday morning, we would report everybody's numbers and discuss your shoes. And I would also do a little bit of sales management, you know, develop, developing our growth, our personal growth. And when one Monday, I asked all the guys, and this is, you know, on a telephone conference call, and I asked them to get a mirror and have a mirror at the desk. Hi, cutie. Just get a mirror and look into the mirror for two minutes before you get on a call, before you reach out in any way and smile. This was before I knew about neuroscience, long before I knew about neuroscience, but I knew the power of the smile and how it would open the heart. And they all had young children. So I also suggested that they think about their kids for two minutes. Think about the baby in their arms. 
think about um, the last funny thing your four-year-old did just two minutes in front of the mirror before you make a content. You can imagine I might've gotten a little bit of pushback from all the guys. <laughs> uh, just, I thought I was gonna get la laughed out of my job that day. But about four weeks later, we started noticing something about our friend Marty. He had the Chicago territory. Marty was a sales manager's dream. He was a plotter. He, de he delivered like 70 to 90% of his quota every week. There was lots of up and down. Some of the sales reps would have no sales in a week or they'd have a big week and then a slow week. But Marty was just a plotter. He, and, but Marty had no <laughs> real panache. He looked like his clothes just came out of the dryer. Um, but he worked, he had a hard working Midwestern work ethic and he had a wife at home with six children. So he was motivated. So we watched every Monday, we would publish everybody's numbers for the week and, and Marty's numbers were going up and they were going up. And one guy said, hey, Marty, what your numbers are great these days. What are you doing? And Marty was kind of shy, and but he said, I'm, I'm doing that mirror thing she told us to do I'm doing that mirror thing and they said what mirror thing they had completely forgotten about it he said you know look in the mirror and think about your kids you know before you call anybody he said it really works for me and i've noticed that i'm really less tired at the end of the day i'm enjoying my work more than i ever have you guys might want to give it a try heart to heart connection these were guys that were so focused, testosterone and the whole company had to get them into their hearts. And that's what I tried and it worked. A year and a half later, we were the top selling uh, computer aided transcription company, not just because of the mirror, but because we had fabulous customer service and because my sales reps were reaching out with an open heart. Next, please. The power of open heartedness, we can't say enough about it. It strengthens you physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. When you open your heart, life is filled with joyful opportunity. Thanks. Next slide, please. All right. Here is your flashcard for connecting with others. And the acronym is SLOW. So, so slow. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Begin the practice again. Three breaths with me right now and a smile on your face. Slow down and connect with yourself first. Three. Step into their shoes. You know that, that old phrase, you gotta walk a mile in somebody's shoes. Slow down, step into their shoes, make it about them. Listen to learn, send them a blessing. Listen to learn and understand not to gain. Open your heart by connecting to your higher self with gratitude and breath. Welcome them as they are. Meet them as they are. Practice non-judgment. Everybody's fighting a hard battle out there, guys. Let's meet them all with compassion. Welcome the light for the highest good of all concern. Breathe. This is, uh, this is your shortcut. This is your flashcard of how to connect with others heart to heart. The next one, please, Gregory. Okay, focus matters. John Maxwell is always talking about how things matter. Well, you get what you focus on in this world. This is a, it's a universal law. Nobody <laughs> gets away from this. And I invite you to activate this affirmation. I choose to be open-hearted in every encounter. I choose to be open-hearted in every encounter. And that means every encounter with yourself. You get what you focus on. If you, particularly if you're, um, again, for the introverts, if you're focusing on your shyness, you're going to get more shyness. If you focus on, I got my three selves lined up. I'm strong. I've done my power posture. I'm going to make a friend. If you focus on that, your um, introversion doesn't even matter. It, it doesn't matter because people want to be seen. They want to be met. When you're safe in your basic self, they will feel safe. Next slide, please. Okay, here we are. We're almost to the end, guys. I know you, thanks for your patience. We went a little over on the time. Here we are. How many times have I had smile and breathe? Smile 
is the universal symbol and language of welcome and safety for your basic selves. When you're, when you're smiling, your basic self is thinking, wow, I'm getting endorphins here. I'm getting serotonin. Things must be okay. So when I sit down to do hard stuff on my computer, when I sit down to do things I don't like, I smile. Yeah, I've got my mirror right here by my, I smile into myself. I say, you got this girlfriend, we can do this. I pump myself up and smile. And then the breath, that's how we connect with our higher self. Your smile is a universal language. Both of these release happy hormones and those happy hormones help you get connected to your higher self so that the inspiration can come. When you're talking to someone, you just know exactly the right thing to say. So practice smiling, practice breathing. They're free. They're available 24-7 a day, and you already know how to do them. This is your like password into the three-self life. Next slide, please, Gregory. So we're almost to the end of the formal presentation, and I wish you all happy heart-to-heart -heart connecting. I invite you to embrace and integrate the three self-wisdom in your whole life. It really, really works. And I think it's time, Robin. Um, should I go on to talking about the, the offers now that we have for everybody? Um, sure. And then we do have some questions. So we have some time for Q&A. And I just want everyone to know that in, on, on my, and this is from JJ, the heart to heart connecting, she, she continues to remind me that, you know, my job when I look in the screen is to send love to everybody. So I have a little reminder right by my camera on my computer. And um, it's just one of those little JJ tools that I use all the time. So I just wanted to share that. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. And right next to mine, I've got a sign that says, love them up with two love little red up. hearts on each. Love them up. And then I have a camera, a little thing up here. It says, look here into the camera and love who's behind it. So yeah, love is the answer no matter what the question. And it, you, you know, you smile, you make the connection. Thanks for bringing that up, Robin. Yeah, practical. And if I forget to say this, <laughs> visual aids are essential for your personal growth. Okay, next slide, Gregory. Um, I'm so excited to be with the LifeWay Proof again. And I've got some free stuff on my website, jj4forinsight.com. First things first, get your free stuff there at the at the footer of every page on my website, you can get a free gift, two pages and two videos discussing emotional triggers. How can you transform emotional triggers? Anybody need that at the holidays? You can get that tonight. As soon as you sign up for that, it's in your inbox now, both uh, handouts and video. So go get that for the holiday season and then check out my video um, tab and my resources tab. There's a uh, 16 free PDFs for over for you there. And my video blog, I have 47 inspirational and practical life hack videos there. But I do want you to do this. I invite you, please, please, please do this. Go to my video blog. The first one at the top, it's featured. Big. It says, <laughs> the most important eight minutes of your life. This is the one habit I ask all of my clients to start with before we start on a transformational journey together. Get that in. It is so powerful. I had a client that came to me that admitted he was suicidal. And I said, well, that's a little bit beyond my pay grade, but would you just do this one thing? Would you do that meditation in the morning? It's eight minutes long for five days and you can sleep the rest of the five days. And But send me an email when you did it. Just say, yes, I did it. After three days, he said, oh my gosh, I can't believe that really it was just where I was focusing. When I shifted my focus, everything changed for me. So go to that one and uh, you'll see the best way to, to get in touch with me, by the way, is email because of my Lexi brain. I like to have one portal and I'm checking it all the time. Next slide, please. Yes, we're going to post my site again. I just saw that up there. So it's easy to get started with me. Usually clients start one of two ways. A single session, just to check it out. Normally $300 is 267 for life waivers. This is a life wave only offer. We've got a secret page for you guys on my website. 
And then the three session, three selves empowerment package, that three sessions is for any topic that you want to address. Normally 747 is now 647. And this offer ends on the 21st, the first day of winter. And uh, we'll go to the next slide, please. So in order to qualify for this discount, all you have to do is schedule your free 30 minute discovery conversation. This is just an opportunity for you and I to get to know each other. You'd ask me questions, no pressure, just to see if you would like to proceed with one-on-one -on -one work with me. And just uh, getting that discovery conversation on the calendar anytime between now and the 21st of, of December will secure this value for you and click here i'm going to click here and show you it takes you right to the special page or it should it's not doing it right now okay for some reason that link didn't work and but that will be in the powerpoint presentation there it is <laughs> thank you gregory so you can see here um, this is a special offer just for you guys and the single startup session. If you scroll down a little bit more, Gregory, on that, you'll see secure this limited time offer for the, with a, your 30 minute discovery conversation. You fill out that little form and then just one more scroll down, Gregory, when you press send, and then here's where you sign up for your free gift for the emotional triggers right after that. When you press send, you'll get a little notice that says JJ will be contacting you soon by email. So that's how we'll get in touch. And I will be working Friday afternoon after Thanksgiving. And I will also be working about an hour and a half later tonight if anybody wants to send me an email. Okay, Robin, I'm finished talking. I know there's lots of questions. I'm handing it over to you. Thank you so much. Well, JJ, um, that was fabulous. Uh, and if this, it's always appropriate, no matter what time of year, especially right now, but because we're going to be with people that we don't normally be with. So coming with that, you know, that intention to connect on all of the levels and have fun with people. I mean, really do, I mean, I, we're bringing games. Our family loves to play together. So we're, we always have games and that's a wonderful way to connect, but there is so much depth and richness in what you shared. And it is, like I said earlier, it's changed my life dramatically. And now I'm more aware of what I'm doing because you've helped me so much over the years. So we do have a few questions and a few people's hands are up. So what we'd love you to do, if you have a question, please put it in the chat and then we can... Um, we can respond easier from there because we're on the webinar format. So I know there are a few hands up and, and do engage with JJ's website. There is so much value there. You know, they say give before you receive. There is so much, so many different tools that are available. And so take advantage of those. So does anyone have any questions? I don't see any questions. I saw, I saw some them. earlier in the, in the, were there were um, questions earlier? Is the first eight minutes of your life on the website? Yes, it is in the video blog. The video blog has, it's right at the top. So go to that tonight, jj4inside.com. And it's, you'll see right there, there's a tab that says videos. You click on that, it'll just pop right up. And Maybe uh, are, Gregory could pop on that now. <laughs> and people are asking about the slides. And so these slides will be available in our Facebook group. And um, we'll probably also have them, I think we can do it um, in the YouTube channel when we post this recording. So will that be up tonight, Robin, or when will yes. we um, that? Hi, this is Gregory. And yes, this the slide deck will be posted here within the hour. So we're very excited to make it available to everyone. And the links in the slide deck will be hot. So you'll be able to download the slides Look at, refresh them on your computer and click any of the links. And the links will also be posted in the Facebook group. Thank you. Thank you, Gregory. And Gregory, gold star to you, sweetie, for all your help today. <laughs> and you, Robbie. Yeah, before we get into a few questions, Gregory, is it okay if I share um, what greeted you at the hospital? <laughs> yes, that'd be fine. 
So <laughs> many of you know that Gregory had a little health challenge several years ago, and we're in Arizona, and we show up at the hospital for a surgical procedure. He gets to his room, and guess what's on his bed? This is at the <laughs> Cancer Treatment Center of America. There's a teddy bear named Lucky on his bed and every patient got one and we had a blast with lucky <laughs> and we did dances and songs and sent them to the kids and he made what kind of difference did it make having lucky with you honey uh, my basic self and lucky just fell in love immediately <laughs> <laughs> well, and I bet you it made you feel safer just to be that you chose that hospital. If they're if they're cool enough to put a teddy bear in my room, I bet you they got the other stuff handled too. I would I would feel instantly safer. And you know, and I brought these little sparkly lights, and you know, you can't have candles in the hospital, but it was amazing. So um, I want to uh, go through a few questions. Christy Grace is asking, where JJ, where does the subconscious mind fit into your model? Very good question. It, the subconscious mind is both the basic self and the conscious self, both of them. Uh, the conscious self is clueless about most of what's going on in your subconscious and unconscious. And that, by the way, is my uh, that's my superpower is helping bring up with the, the assistance of the Akashic Records reading, I can see what's down. So that is, that's actually body consciousness, soul consciousness. Uh, so yes, it's mostly the basic self and the conscious self in a combination. Beautiful, beautiful. And now that you're aware of these three selves, I invite each one of you to just take a look at your relationships. Where are you connecting with people? What self are you connecting with? And see if you can expand it into all three selves. And it could be something as simple as having a conversation of, you know, what's your vision for your future? You know, what do you do for fun? You know, how do you feel? What makes you feel safe in the world? You know, and just have fun exploring the different selves and watch what happens. So let's see if there's other questions here. I want to make sure. I've got a quick meeting opener, Robin, for around the Christmas or Thanksgiving table. Uh, is fun for the basic self is ask, what was your favorite Thanksgiving? What was about that Thanksgiving that was special for you? And then that takes you to the kid when you were a kid. And uh, it keeps a, it keeps things on a positive level. You had a question, Robin, for someone? Uh, no, I don't see. Let's see. Please. Could, um, we Barbara will get Lincoln Todd has raised her hand. A couple people have raised their hands. Okay. Barbara, um, do you want to write in the chat what your question is? Yeah, and uh, several of you know this about me because you've been on my private Facebook page. I have a personal tradition of making turkey cookies. And I, <laughs> ever since I met them 12 years ago, it's something I have to do every year. And it's my, and this is, you know, it's my basic self. And this year I'm doing something in addition to that that's another basic self. It's a choo choo train made out of peppers for veggies. So, um, <laughs> It's really fun to have fun with food. <laughs> and okay. thank you, Connie Lucas, for your beautiful comment. Um, uh, how the work had changed her life and her family. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. And, and so if any of you are in the place where you're just ready for the next level, you know, you just are ready. So I just invite you to set up that introductory call and see if it's a fit for you. It's not a fit for everybody, but you'll know. And JJ will know too. So um, yeah, and uh, yeah, no obligation, no pressure. It's fun. Uh, and um, just lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah. guarantee you that your basic selves are safe in my coaching practice. <laughs> and you know, the and years ago, uh, they called me an all-purpose trainer, and I felt like laundry detergent. And <laughs> and JJ said something to me that was really profound for me, is that people feel safe with me because I was raised in a safe world. And that's part of, you know, helping me understand from an unconscious competence why I love this personal development field so much is supporting people in growing outside of their comfort zone a little bit, but you have to feel safe first. 
and safety is key. And remember what the basic self wants. Am I good? Am I safe? Yeah. Yes. Yes. yes Am I yes. loved? Yes. That's all yes. I want. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anyone else have any questions for JJ? A lot of wonderful comments. Some of them are coming right to the hosts and panelists. There's a lot of great comments. And um, so I know many of you have worked with JJ and I've witnessed some amazing changes in several of you and your um, your your growth and development. And it's just a joy for me to, to witness that. So um, I'm just like saying- Somebody just I asked about uh, the special- that they had already had a single session with me. Yes, if you want to purchase the, the three session package, you would get that price. And also, if you have someone close to you that's not a life waiver, that's okay. Let's let's get them in. I I I rarely discount. So anybody wants to get in on this one, this is the time to do it. And um, I just thank you again for everybody out there, all basic selves. Here's your gold star. And here's the giant gold star for showing up tonight for all that you did and all that you are and all the beautiful work that all of you are doing in the world. There's a question, JJ. Okay. Barb, and she says, a sense of belonging is one of my greatest needs. How do I give that to myself? Oh, I just got chills. This, this, who is this from again, Robin? It's from Barb. Barb. Barb, right now, put your hands on your shoulders here, upper arms, and say, this is your higher self. You're talking to the part of you that's not sure. You are worthy of love and belonging. And you always have been. So you start with self-talk. The whole thing here. Remember at the beginning, I said, this is two to five minutes. It's two to five minutes of focused, intentional, conscious competence with your self-talk and you start praising yourself for every time you reach out and you you make a choice to belong. And, and no matter what anybody else tells you, I mean, this is Brene Brown's work, right? Shame, any kind of shaming or guilty, guilting has made us believe we're not, we don't belong. We are worthy of love and belonging. No matter what we do, we are born that way. So Barb, yeah, give me a call. Let's talk about that. But it really, literally, as you start with your basic self, and remember the slide about the the no guilting, the no, the no shaming, that we're going to live in that. Whenever you have that thought bar, just stop it, drop it, say something kind to yourself, get yourself in the power posture, move into a smile and gratitude. Literally, smiling and breathing will change your life. <laughs> Use strategically. Uh, but it's how you talk to yourself. Nobody else is going to give you that sense. It's going to come from within you. And thank you, thank you, thank you. That was beautiful because there are times when we all need that. And Jada asked a really, really important question. She said, what if one is raised in an unsafe world? Honestly, most people were, whether it's oh, physically, Jada. financially. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was. I had twenty. I had seventeen major traumas before I was twenty-three, and I, I grew up in middle-class America, but it was not safe for me. Um, my neighborhood wasn't safe for me. So it doesn't matter. You. That's the past. Your your higher self lives in the now. Your healing is in the now. That's one of the things we do in work. When I work with my clients, is okay. The past happened. We can't unring that bell. We don't have to live there anymore, peeps. Let's get our focus right here and let's use some tools. Unsafe world, 90% of human beings on the planet are not raised in a safe place and are constantly criticized or shamed or raped in their own homes. So that doesn't have to stop you from having a beautiful, joyous life the rest of your life. Hmm. Where'd you go, Robin? I don't see you. I'm back. <laughs> here. I here. asked. I hope that answered your question, Jada. And if not, please just reach out to me via email, and we'll chat. Yeah, that that thing about safety, and it could be it wasn't safe emotionally, it wasn't safe physically, sexually, spiritually, financially, any of those things. And it's very rare that people were raised in a safe world. That's Most right. Of 
It's very rare. And that's why we've got to do this work for ourselves. And it will make a huge difference for your own growth to go into new places. Okay, I think we got it. And here we are. Did Barbara Living kind of get her question answered? It's I, I still up on the screen. I, I didn't see a question from um from Barbara. I saw her hand up, but I didn't see a question. So um we will thank you, Jada, for your for your for your sure. tender question. And I am just, I'm giving you a gold star, Jada, for your basic self for having the courage to ask that question. And um, yeah, all change starts within. It's not outside of us. We, it's like Dorothy. We have the power all along. We can do this. <laughs> JJ, could you talk about the power of the gold star for a second? Because, you know, when we were little kids and we got gold stars, that was a big deal. But as adults, we don't get too many. Yeah, well, I, I got to tell you a story. When Robin and I were working with Enlightened Leadership, we would be often in front of 20 executives with high level, high level compensation packages, you know, $4,000 watches on their wrists and kind of a, what does this lady have to teach me, right? So usually by the second day, we'd have them warmed up, but they're high level corporate execs and they're, you know, it's, they've hard to get there so at the end of the four days we would work from tuesday through friday uh, from eight to noon that was our rhythm with this enlightened leadership package and at the end of that time i would have a certificate for them that they had achieved the uh the four days and you know they had achieved enlightenment as a leader and i had gold stars large gold stars on the sticker so at the end of, you know, whenever I saying goodbye, I would actually get a couple hugs from these guys, you know, after four days, there was like, it's okay. And this one guy was hanging back and he waited until everybody was gone. And he came up to me and he's holding his certificate. Like, you know, it's like really precious. And he comes right up to me and he says, no one has ever given me a gold star. And he had moist eyes and then I got moist eyes and, and then we just hugged. And what that taught me, it doesn't matter what your compensation package is. We all have a basic self that needs to know, are you loved? Are you good? You get a gold star. Are you safe? Everyone does, no matter who they are, what they're doing, what they look like. And so I, for many, many years, uh, had a gold star ministry. I would carry them around in my purse, really a uh, roll of them. And whenever I went to the grocery market anywhere, I would I would pull one off the sticker while I was getting my money out and I would hand it to the checker and say, here's your wonderful human award. And they, I said, well, would you like it? They usually wanted it on their hand or on their name tag. And I gave these out for 10 years to anybody I ran into, anybody I was inspired. And every time they go, oh, they became three years old every time their basic self. So Gold Star Ministry uh, is um, part of my life. This is what uh, what Robin sent me for one of my latest gifts is a roll of Gold Stars. <laughs> so use them in your life. Uh, yeah, I, I might overdo it a little bit on the Gold Star, but that's because who doesn't need a Gold Star just for waking up in the morning? And you know, like Plato said, be kind to everyone for everyone is fighting a hard battle. This is a tough place world, this earth. So let's be kind. Let's pass out some gold stars. I see one more question from Eleanor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, she said, Robin, how do you pick gifts that were from all three selves? <laughs> So it's it's actually a fun experience. I remember what I picked for that particular situation. You know, it's like, what does a little kid want? That's the basic self. And so I I got finger paints, you know, and what does the conscious self want? You know, something practical and- it wants you know, information and wants something to help do. Yeah, like, you know, a conscious self tool could actually be one of those miniature car toolkits. Conscious selves love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I gave a journal, you know? Yeah. And then 
the high self, what's going to help you connect to that place of your high self? And a candle is a good idea, but there's a zillion different things. So I think it's a great question to live in. JJ's going to get something. And, uh, yeah. and, and, you know, in your work environment, make sure your work environment includes all yourselves too. <laughs> you know, I have flowers. I have my teddy bear. I have my candle. You know, it's like, do this for yourself. You know, because it makes a difference. Yeah. And it's Robin and I have fun competing on who can do the best, you know, basic self, high self, conscious self at birthdays and sometimes Christmas. I have recently just, well, actually I discovered this quite a long time ago, but it's still available. And I recommend this for all high selves. The Eckhart Tolle book, Stillness Speaks. And it's just beautiful little short things that take you right to the higher self. This is a gorgeous book. It's a great bathroom book. It's a great travel book. So this is a good high self gift for the season. So why don't you close it up, JJ? Well, thank you all. I thank all the basic selves out there. You're wonderful. You're loved, lovable, and you're so good. And I thank all the conscious selves for getting here on time and managing your technology. <laughs> and I thank all the higher selves for bringing us to LifeWave, Robin and Gravery, and each other. Thank you for the light you bring to the world. It was a joy, just a joy to be with all of you. And a reminder, I'll be watching my email for about another hour tonight, and I'll be back on my emails Friday afternoon if anybody wants to reach out for a discovery conversation. I'm available. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Gregory. Thank you guys so much for always believing in me and supporting me so well. Thank you. And have a Somebody wonderful wrote the word wonder-filled. Oh, I love that. Yes. That's, that's that actually happens when you start working with the three selves, you do feel a greater sense of wonder and awe and kind of inherent joy comes. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Bye, Bye for now. <laughs> Bye, buddy. <laughs>